Hey guys, this is Eric from Invensys, and I welcome you to our YouTube channel. In today's session, we will discuss the Sprint retrospective in detail. So to watch the video, till the very end. Before we start the video, let us take a quick glimpse at the agenda for the session. We shall begin by understanding why we need Sprint retrospective. Then, let's understand what is Sprint retrospective. Followed by who runs a Sprint retrospective. Next, we will see how to run a Sprint retrospective. Lastly, let's understand the tips on how to conduct a successful Sprint retrospective. I hope the agenda is clear. If you like this video, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, to learn more about project management and its practices, check out Invensys Learning's Project Management Certification Training on Prints 2, Project Management Fundamentals, PO, Capman and MSP. All of the necessary information is given in the description box below. Let's get started with the first topic of today's session. Why we need a sprint retrospective. No matter how good a scrum team is, there is always room for improvement. This is why the team should set aside a brief amount of time at the end of each sprint to reflect on how they improve. This discussion generally occurs during the sprint retrospective. Sprint retrospectives are the final step of the scrum sprint cycle. Here, teams review the completed sprint to generate new ideas that can improve the next cycle. The sprint can occur between 60 to 90 minutes but can extend beyond that based on the length of the sprint. You must be wondering why we need to have these intense sessions? There are several reasons, we will talk about each of these in detail. The main purpose of the meeting is not to simply address the service or result. But, to also understand the team coordination, tools used in various processes that have helped deliver the planned increment. Scrum Master is usually responsible for conducting the meetings. Here, a Scrum Master is simply a professional who leads an entire team throughout a project using Agile project management techniques. Now, let us take a look at what issues are identified by the Scrum Master during a sprint retrospective. Firstly, the Scrum Master identifies what issues were caused throughout the entire cycle. He or she must understand if the team was able to deliver planned story points or was there any problem within a particular process. Or maybe there were some communication issues with a team member. All of these issues are addressed in detail during the sprint retrospective. These issues are to make sure that these mistakes or roadblocks do not occur in the future, and to make improvements in the upcoming cycles. This does not mean that one can blame anyone, but as a team it is necessary to learn how to avoid risks for the next sprint. Next, the scrum master must identify the right parts of the previous sprint cycle. As much as he or she can highlight what went wrong, it is important to talk and understand how the results of the planned cycle turned out. This helps the team with morale and also reinforces Scrum's key values and principles. Next, it is important to identify what must be improved. If key points of what must be improved is identified by the Scrum Master, the next sprint can be much more efficient. The team can then commit to a list of action items. Finally, the last purpose of the sprint retrospective is to nurture a positive and friendly environment that is open to feedback. It is important for Scrum Masters to motivate the team members. They must feel valued and trusted so that they can be the best version of themselves and be motivated for the next sprint. This can be done by adopting sprint retrospective games, which are informal and a fun way to conduct the meeting. Now that you know the purpose of the sprint retrospective, let us understand what is a sprint retrospective. The sprint retrospective occurs right after the sprint review and prior to the next sprint planning. You can check out in Venice's sprint planning meeting video, the link is given in the description box below. For one-month sprints, you can expect the sprint retrospective to be a three-hour meeting. This session is simply an improvement meeting that is held to find various ways to identify potential problems, past mistakes and incorporate new methods to avoid these mistakes in the future. The participants of the sprint retrospective are usually the scrum master and development team members. In other words, it is a meeting to measure the team performance based on their assigned activities and tasks. And what more can be done to elevate the performance of the team in the next sprint? This way it can be more enjoyable and fruitful for the entire team. The meeting is held with respect to two key aspects, inspect and adapt. Now that you have an idea of what a sprint retrospective is, let us discuss the sprint life cycle in detail. Each sprint starts with two major planning sessions to define the sprint's content. These are the what and how of the sprint planning meeting. The combination of these two meetings are also called a sprint planning meeting. At the end of the sprint, a sprint review meeting is held. Here, the Scrum product owner checks if all the requirements and items are complete. After which, the sprint retrospective meeting is conducted to cross-check and improve the entire process. Here, 
the team will discuss what was good in the sprint, what must continue in the same manner and also the improvements that must be incorporated for the upcoming sprints. Let us now discuss the steps to conduct a sprint retrospective meeting. The first and foremost step is to set a goal. It is important to give the team members some clarity about the meeting and what to expect from it. The next step is to gather all the information regarding the sprint. One must create a shared pool of data that will help everyone remember the details of the sprint. Next step is to gather insights and identify various patterns, understanding why certain activities were performed. Then there must be a mandatory discussion on what to do. Select a few issues and create plans on how you will address them. The final step is to close the retrospective by discussing how the retrospectives can improve, appreciate and motivate team members and also end the meeting on a clear note. If the sprint duration is one week the sprint retrospective duration is about 45 minutes. On the other hand, if the sprint duration is two weeks then the retrospective lasts for and if the sprint is for about one month then the retrospective meeting will be held for 180 minutes that is for almost three hours. Now, let us discuss who runs a sprint retrospective. We already know that the sprint retrospective is usually the final meeting done in a sprint. Usually, teams will do it immediately after the sprint review. So, the entire team involved in the project with the scrum master and product owner are involved in the retrospective. All of them are required to actively participate and discuss the tasks performed. During the sprint retrospective, the team usually talk about what went well in the sprint, what went wrong in the sprint, what we had learned in the sprint, what should we do differently in the next sprint. Now, let's move ahead to the next part of this session and talk about how to run a sprint retrospective. All the meetings should be held in a very friendly and skeptical manner. Unfortunately, most of the meetings seem like a threat to every individual. But the retrospective, but be an opportunity to improve the team's productivity by addressing each issue with a positive manner. This way the entire team will be motivated to work efficiently. A sprint retrospective meeting must be worth your team's effort and time, not just another unnecessary meeting. This is why one must know how to run it in the right manner. Firstly, be open in conducting your retrospective meetings asynchronously. The team does not have to come up with solutions right away but they can have time to process the problem, discuss the solutions with their team members and come up with a solution whenever required. You can also ask your team to write up their individual retrospectives and reserve real-time, face-to-face communication for particularly challenging issues. This way your team will be able to make a note of their retros in a structured manner. They will also have enough time to reflect on their contributions and provide immediate feedback. Documentation is extremely important and every team member will have an opportunity to document their tasks and experiences in an appropriate way. Next, the Scrum Master must establish a safe environment for feedback. Feedbacks can be sensitive to most team members. This is why it is important for the Scrum Master to respect and analyze each feedback with utmost care. There are various ways to encourage your team to be honest and clear in their retrospectives. Let everyone know in advance about the meeting and tell them to write their thoughts in advance. This is because team members might be more hesitant to bring up sensitive subjects during a face-to-face meeting. Next, make sure that every member participates in the meeting. If anyone's work is going to be discussed for any reason, they must have the opportunity to express their work. It is best if one can appoint a moderator to guide the entire discussion. Usually, this person will not have a stake in the discussion. Next, you can assign tasks as they come up. The main goal as we discussed previously of retrospective is to not just to share information, but to identify and implement improvements and necessary tasks for the upcoming sprints. Make sure you clearly document the results of these discussions and the next steps you will take for utilizing them to the maximum. Finally, do not just emphasize the technical issues. The sprint retrospectives are very different from traditional meetings and project reviews. It does not just focus on the team's development but also on the team issues itself. Don't miss this opportunity to identify and address any problems with team dynamics which may become an obstacle for your work. With this we are going to address the last part of today's session and discuss tips on how to conduct a successful sprint retrospective. Firstly, you must define the goal of the sprint clearly. It must be specific and measurable based on the discussion that occurred during the sprint retrospective between the team and product owner. This goal can be well documented as well. It is extremely important to find the right balance and have a goal challenging enough to bring out the best of the team while keeping them engaged and motivated to deliver results. Next, an important tip is to pre-plan the sprint planning. It is advisable to set up a shorter meeting before the actual one is not a mandatory step, but it can be proven beneficial. 
This will allow everyone to get a chance to review the tasks that you intend to include at the next sprint and listen to your team's feedback. This way, prioritization, task creation, and the following estimation will be much easier to complete during the actual meeting. The next tip is to prioritize issues according to the team's productivity level. There are no clear guidelines when it comes to the prioritization of tasks that will assist you in reaching your goal. This decision is up to the product owner or scrum master and at the next step, the team's discretion to discuss and decide what work will be undertaken to reach the wanted results. Some teams decide to take it easy at the start and complete the smaller tasks of their project, while others start with the complex and leave the smaller and easier ones for the end. As mentioned before, there is no right or wrong way as long as all members are aligned, and tasks help them fulfill the goal. Next tip is to decompose tasks into smaller components. The goal here is to avoid having any task with an estimation for completion that exceeds a full day's work. Working on a single activity or for more than two will probably leave a member behind on the progress and unmotivated. Breaking a bigger task into pieces can be not only an easier goal to reach but also a simpler method to collaborate with others. Sometimes members can easily fall into the trap of getting too confident and taking a heavy load of tasks. As a result, the work to be created will be counterproductive and there is a high chance that the team will fail to deliver the expected results on time. That will lead to confusion and outbreak. So it is the Scrum Master's responsibility to lead the team and motivate them to complete their tasks on time and in an efficient manner. He or she must create an experience out of the entire project and persuade the team to do better. Next, you must analyze your sprint planning meetings during retrospectives. There are several issues that can prevent you from successfully running your sprint planning meetings like, teams usually forget to define the purpose of sprints that can make them feel lost afterwards. Sometimes, the sprint planning sessions are too long and time-consuming. Team members can also have trust issues with each other when it comes to evaluating tasks. And much more. Although many of these issues are hidden and can sabotage the team's productivity, successful agile teams easily reveal and fix them during retrospectives. This is why you must make sure you allocate time and add questions such as what did you like and dislike about the last sprint planning session during retrospectives to let your team members share their opinions. And with this we have come to the end of this video. I hope it was helpful. If this has spiked your interest and you want to know more about project management, I recommend you to opt for PMP certification training and clear the exam. At Invensys Learning, we provide various PMP certifications that will pave the way for your career in project management. For each of these certifications, we are accredited by respective governing bodies or courses in line with their guidelines. Post-enrollment, you will get lifetime access to a personalized learning management system. LMS has all the class recordings, live class, webinar links along with assignments and case studies to practice. All classes are live instructor led delivered by trainers with rich domain experience. Thank you guys. See you in the next session.